This is the 2019 Calculus AB FRQ question number six. There's a lot of information given, and so you'd be wise to annotate it. So they're saying all three functions are twice differentiable. That means the first and second derivative exist everywhere. Now this information here, I annotate, I already wrote it down. You can see it here in the top left. G of 2 is 4 and H of 2 is 4. I wrote them separately so I can clearly just distinguish that in my brain and have it easily readable. But if you annotate it, you're not gonna, it's not going to get lost in the problem. Then you're told this line is tangent to G and H at 2. So visually, I don't know what the graph looks like, but just visually what's going on, that means at 2... I don't know what point is. I'm just going to draw that point and just imagine that that is the line tangent. So what does that mean? The graphs might look like this. And the other graph, they told us G and H. So H might look like this, maybe, maybe not. That might be H. This might be G, but conceptually, that red line is tangent to both the green and the blue graph at 2. So that's basically what they're telling you. So they want us to find H prime of 2, part A. Well, a, what is H prime of 2? That's the slope of the tangent line at 2. But that red line I drew is the slope, is the tangent line. So we need to find the slope of this line. Clearly, the slope is 2 thirds. So quickly, we get the answer of 2 thirds for that. Now we're going to part B. And let's read that. So we have a new function a of x, and we want the derivative of that. Let me do b over here. So I'm going to write down my a of x. That's 3x cubed h of x. Now, very important to notice, this is two functions being multiplied. 3x squared is a function. And h of x is a function. So therefore, we need the product rule. So I leave the first alone and take the derivative of the second. And then I take the derivative of the first and leave the second alone. Now, you could reverse the order of that. Since we're adding these, addition's commutative, so it doesn't matter which order. I want h prime at 2, or a prime at 2. So I just plug a 2 wherever there is an x. And this will be 3 times 2 cubed. h squared, or h prime at 2, we just found that in part a. That's just 2 thirds. And h of 2, well, I wrote that down earlier. They told us it was 4. That answer is it. That's fine. Do not simplify that. But I am going to just to see if I got the same answer as the scoring guidelines. That's 3 times 8 times 2 thirds plus, okay, 4, four times 9, 36, 72, 72, 72 times 2 is 144. These threes cancel, I get 16, 160, bam, that's what they got. Do not simplify it, please do not. You're gonna waste time and you take a chance of getting the wrong answer. All right, part C, function h, they give us the equation for h for everywhere except at two. I assume at two you're gonna get an undefined, so that's why they said that. It's known that the limit as h, x approaches 2 can be evaluated using L'Hopital's. Use the limit 
as x approaches 2 of h of x to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. Show the work that leads to your answer. So they are kind of going backwards. You don't want to find the limit of h. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Use the limit. Oh, no, no, no. They're not asking you to find the limit. They just want you to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. So if you look at the top, if you plug in 2, you get 0. On the bottom, f of 2, let me see what's going on. On the bottom, oh, my bad. My bad. Let me back up a little. On the top, if you plug in 2, you get 0. Let me show you that. Let me, let me show you. Because L'Hopital's can occur when the numerator and denominator both approach 0 or both approach infinity. Since we don't know the case, if we do this, the limit, this is part C, or B, C, C, C. The limit as x approaches 2 of the top equals 0. So therefore, for L'Hopital to apply, that must mean that the limit as x approaches 2 of the bottom must also be 0. Well, if I solve... Oh, for that to be true, that means the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x cubed must equal 1. That must mean the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x must be 1. Now that should make sense because if you plug a 1 right there, that's what gives you 0. So f of x must be approaching 1. All right, so we have finished part A, first part of C, the first part. We have found, let me show you. We found f of 2. Now we need to find f prime of 2. Let me see what's going on. Are we told anything about f above? Okay, I don't see anything. So I guess we should do L'Hopital's. By L'Hopital's, we don't want that. By L'Hopital's, the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x equals, we'll take the derivative of the top, 2x, and the derivative of the bottom, so the derivative of 1 is 0, but the derivative of minus box to the third will be negative 3 box squared times the derivative of the box. And that, now we take, ooh, I forgot the limit in there. Yoshida, let me try to squeeze it in there. I'm going to zoom in and squeeze it in. Watch this. Equals the limit as x approaches 2. Bam! You like that, huh? Now, let's keep reading. So, find f of, f of 2 and f prime of 2. Show the work that leads to your answer. So let me look at this. If I plug in 2 on the top and bottom, and it doesn't say how many times you use L'Hopital's. Let's see. Um, there's our h. It is known that the limit of x approaches to h of x can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. Use the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. Oh, nice. Okay, so we're going to use some extra information here. What is h of 2? Okay, this is okay. My brain just clicked right now. So we know that the function is twice differentiable. If a function is twice differentiable, that means it's continuous. 
And if a function's continuous, to find the limit, it's the same as the value at the point. And so if h of 2 is 4, that means this limit must equal 4. So this must equal 4. Now I can plug things in and hopefully magic happens. So the top, the numerator 2x, is a continuous function. So to find the limit, you just plug in 2. And similarly on the bottom, since... f of x is continuous. To find the limit, I just plug in 2. And f prime at 2, well, we'll figure that out. Oh, that's what we're trying to find. Yes, 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 yes. So this will lead us to 4 over. Now, f of 2 we found f of 2 was 1. Okay, why is f of 2 1? Okay, oh, we got to back up a little bit. Okay, we found, okay, I need to back up on this part. So over here, we found the limit. We did not find f of 2. So I need to say, since f of x is continuous f of 2 equals the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals 1. Now we know f of 2 is 1. Okay, back here. This is crazy. This is a good problem. This is requiring the knowledge of a lot of information. Oh, and f prime of 2. Let me back up. We have that already. f prime of 2 we found earlier, I believe. Or we found somewhere. Did we? I don't remember if we found it. Oh, we're... Okay. Wow. My brain is fried. We're trying to find f prime of 2. That's what we're looking for. I lost, totally lost track of the whole purpose of the problem. That's sad. So 4, um, that's going to be negative 3. f prime of 2 equals 4. Multiply both sides by f prime of 2. 4 over negative 3 equals 4 f prime at 2. Divide both sides by 4. f prime of 2 equals 1 over negative 3. Craziness. That's a great question. It involves a lot of little subtle ideas. The important, the definition of continuity, if a function's continuous, the limit will equal the value at that point. That is an important concept that's being emphasized here. I like that. Um, we use that a couple of times. We use that just as I'm kind of review this a little bit before we go on to D. So where did we use that? We use that here. We have the limit, but they wanted actually f of two. So therefore we said, hey, so if f of x is continuous, by definition of continuity, the limit equals the value at the point. So f of 2 equals a limit. That's the definition of continuity right there that you should know. So that equals 1. Now, I don't know if I use the argument over here, and maybe I need to use a little more justification. So, okay. We do, I probably need to add a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah. Where do I need to use that? So I probably should have said that here. So looking at this statement here, that's just L'Hopital's, so that's fine. But jumping from here to here, I should state because H is continuous, the limit equals the value at the point. I should have said, stated that. So let me clarify that over here. So you see what's going on. To find the limit here, to find that limit, how do I know I can just plug in 2? 
because that's not always true. That's only true if it's continuous. So I should say since H, oh, I got to add more. Wow, this is so cool. There's a lot of stuff. And I, I just want to give you the little details. Does it ever state that F, G, and H are continuous? It doesn't state that. So for me, just to pull that out of nowhere, that's no bueno. So above my work, I should say this. Since, and probably just at the beginning of C, I could have done this. Since F, G, and H are differentiable, therefore F, G, and H are continuous. We have to get the continuity somewhere, and it's because they're differentiable. So I can state that anywhere before part C. And now that I stated that, I can use the fact that these functions are continuous. Now I can say since H is continuous, therefore, ooh, oh, wow, 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 I'm running out of room. Some of you are like, what are you talking about, Yoshida? Hopefully it's making sense to you. Maybe you want to go back a little bit and kind of process through it. But therefore, the limit as H, oh, as X approaches 2 of H of X equals H of 2, which equals that. So that's saying I could just plug in 2 into my function, and I did. I just plugged in 2 right there, and then I said equal to 4, and then we just go down the chain, and then we get F double prime is 2. Then we are happy. Okay. Whew. That is a really good question. A lot of concepts. I think a lot of your brains are kind of fried after that one, but that is a really, really good question. So now I'm going to erase all that because we still have part D. Hopefully I can do it pretty quickly here. Oh, wow. Sorry, you OCD ears. You're probably freaking out with that move right there. Ay, ay, ay. I think we're good. Oh, whoa, whoa. Um, you want me to get rid of that? It's not getting, I can't get rid of the spot if you're bothered by it. Sorry. Wait, I bet you I can get rid of it with this. Yeah. Whoops. There we go. I don't know why it does that, but that's what it does. Okay, part D. It is known that G is always less than H. Oh, I feel a squeeze theorem coming. I really do. And very rarely do we get a squeeze theorem. Let K be, so K is a function between G and H. It's definitely going to be a squeeze theorem. K is continuous at 2. Okay. Is K continuous? Okay. This is craziness. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through... And what's crazy about this one also, it, it's one point. It's only worth one point. And uh, I think a lot, I didn't look at the scoring commentaries from College Board, but I think a lot of students would struggle with this. So we know G and H are differentiable, are two functions involved, and therefore G and H are continuous. So I already stated, okay, we don't always talk about it. Yeah, I did up here. Since F, G, and H are differentiable, therefore F, G, and H are continuous. So that we have all said. So I could do this since G and H are continuous. Therefore, the limit as X approaches 2 of G of, oopsies, of G of X equals G of 2. And the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x equals h of 2 equals 4. And they both equal 4, actually. So let me 
squeeze that in there. So we get that on both. All right, so this is where, yeah, this is crazy. So I'm going to draw a picture of what's happening. So you have a function. Let me get a border. Wow, they rarely, like squeeze theorem is like pretty much never appears on AP test. So pretty interesting that they popped it in here. But they only made it one point, so they were kind of nice. At two, we have three functions. I will do, what's the biggest function? H is the biggest one. And I will draw some random function H like that. And at two, we know it equals four. So I'm gonna put a dot there. We know that value is four. We're told that. Um, at the beginning, we're told that. And then, I should label that for you. That's the biggest function, that's h of x. And then we have g of x, which is smaller than that. So g of x, I'll do in blue. So I'll always have below or equal. So I'm gonna go wee. So we know that g of x is always less than or equal to h of x. That's what they told us. But at two, they both equal four. Then we have this new function, k of x, which is between the two. So my k of x as I draw has to be between those two. Y'all see that? So what does that have to do with anything? Now you know at 2, the limit of h of x is 4, the limit of g of x is 4, and you see since k is squeezed between h of x and g of x, the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x must also equal 4. All right? So that's actually squeeze theorem. I'm going to say since g of x is less or equal to k of x is less or equal to h of x. Now, this picture you don't have to draw. I just did that so you can see. So now we have the fact that the limit of g of x and the limit of h of x both equal 4. And then k of x is between. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x, whoa, that's getting really bad, of k of x also equals 4. So that's using squeeze theorem, we get that. Now we got more to go. So, what else do we know? Oh, I just, yeah, I didn't like you, we're good. So, what's happening? This limit must be 4. But also, since g of, okay, we're going to do more stuff. This is good. G of 2 must be less than or equal to K of, okay, K of 2 must be less than or equal to H of 2. But H of 2 equals 4 and G of 2 equals 4. Therefore, K of 2 equals 4. Well, this limit's true. This value is true, so if the limit is the same as the value at the point, by definition, therefore, k is continuous at x equals 2. That's craziness. So when you see this problem and it asks for you to prove that k is continuous at 2, you should think I have to prove the limit as x approaches 2 of k equals 
k of 2. The limit equals the value at the point. This is the conclusion you knew you need to get to. And so this step, I think, was the easiest. Well, you know g of 2. You know h of 2. And since k is between, they have to be equal, all of them. Therefore, k of 2 is 4. But how do you get the limit? And that's where the squeeze theorem comes. So the squeeze theorem is saying, as I approach from this side, if you look at the picture, and I approach on k from the right side, look at the picture, k is getting squeezed between h and g. Therefore, as I approach 2 from both sides of k, it has to approach 4, a limit. That's the squeeze theorem. The, how do you find the limit? You squeeze it between two other functions, and whammo, bammo, you have it. That was a, kind of a crazy question. I guess lack of practice in squeeze theorem can ha make that happen, because I usually don't go over it much, because it just doesn't appear on the test, and they usually use the applications of it. But that's it. Hope you guys uh, aren't too confused. And the good thing is, if you are confused, that was only a one-pointer. Bye.